All right, Landon with Aqualux Auto Detailing. I have a paint thickness gauge, and the reading I just got is 3.94 mils, okay? What does that mean, all right? I had a really different experience the other day when I had two different vehicles. One was a 2019 Escalade, and another was a 2013 Maserati. So what's going on these days and hopefully the latency catches up. So I'm, I did this on my personal page, but I'm going to talk about it again. So we do paint readings in mils and microns, but for the sake of argument, we're just going to stick with mils. Okay. So this is your typical, um, business card, if you will. Um, I'll turn the camera around. I got a new phone, so I hope it really just, um, brings out the clarity. Um, and I have one, two, three, four, five different pieces of clear coat. Okay. So let me talk about clear coat real quick. So the past 10 to 15 years, manufacturers have actually been cutting costs. So when they cut cost, well, sometimes we wonder where it is. Well, they've been doing it on the clear coat in the paint. So recently I got a 20 point something reading on a 2013 Maserati on the mills reading. Okay. Then I went over to the 2019 Escalade and I got Five, just a tick over five mils reading, okay? And I'm gonna show you all the difference here. And I actually have um, a reading of 3.94 and I actually have a clear coat um, reading of 3.94. And then I'm gonna actually go even farther because I had a client with the Infiniti QX60. They drove from Houston, super grateful. So always grateful for my clients, but, and somebody who drives from Houston, I'm just blown away and humbled. But clear coat on their vehicle, I was doing readings around the entire car. And then I got to the hood. When I got to the hood, the hood read eight mils and the rest of the car was reading in the threes like this. So I, I immediately go, hey, something's going on. Typically when we see readings over that mark, eight mils, that's been repainted. So that let me know, hey, the car's probably been an accident. And then I start going, oh, and then I'm like, hey, I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news. Gave him a phone call, look. Just want to let y'all know, and I never like doing it, but I start getting intimate with the car, if you will. I always tell my clients, look, I'm getting intimate with your car when I start doing the clay and the paint correction and everything. But even when I'm doing a full of round observation of your vehicle inspection and I'm taking the readings, especially now, I just like to do it to be on a safe side. I get catch some areas around the whole vehicle and then we're going to move on from there. Okay, but I'm visual. I like visual aid and this is where it's going to come in. I'm going to set these down here in a second on my handy dandy bench, but I'm going to line them up and then we're going to see um, the difference and I'm going to one hand this whole show um, and show you all the difference. Okay, so bear with me and we're going to switch the camera around really quick in one second. Hold on. And here we go. So we're going to switch the, the camera around. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Bear with me. Okay, so here we go. And I hope y'all can see this. Okay, so on, on the readings, we have 39.4, 19.7, 9.84, 3.94, 1.97. Don't forget that reading right there, 3.94, is this second piece right here. And I'll show that to you in a second, okay? So if you want to see 39.4 all the way to 1, here we go. I'm going to try to capture it from the side. Okay, If can you see that? And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, but I wanted you all to get the visual. So we got 39.4 all the way to 1.97. Do you see how th incredibly thin that is? And when I get readings under the four reading, like right here at 3.94, I start getting weary because kind of the 3.0 mil range is where I will not touch paint anymore. And that's actually where you can burn paint. Okay. So we're going to take the business card and put it side by side with the 3.94 reading. The business card is thicker, way thicker than the 3.94 reading. Okay. So what does this mean? All right. I'm going to break it down. So the Maserati was 19.7. And so we'll do these combined. That's what it was. And it wasn't even in. Okay, so it had like 10 or 15 mils more. So what's going on is I have to heat up clear coat when we do paint correction. So long story short, we get the pad, the polisher, and all that stuff, all the fun stuff. And then we're removing the defects, swirls, and all that stuff. Well, when you go to automatic car washes, about 80% of the population just goes to automatic car washes. And that's never going to change. That's just the reality of it. 20% do their own and or are higher auto detailers. Okay, so that's the um, math on it. So when you go to the automatic car washes, you're expediting this process of the spider webbing, the defects, everything. And you're it's smacking the clear coat really hard. So 
when you ask us to come in and we have to remove clear coat, well, it's gonna be different now. So if you don't have it coated now from the beginning, if you buy a new car like these 2020s, they're putting almost less than five mils on it. Like I was getting lower than almost four mil readings the other day. So what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna get to like clear coat like this. And I'm gonna have to tell you, look, I might be able to do something small, but we might get 25 to 50% of the defects out. Maybe, maybe if it's good. And if it's, you know, below that, you're going to have to get it painted. And the best example I have is our Sequoia up here is it cost me about just about 150 to 200 bucks for whatever the part was. And then when I went to go get it painted, the front bumper, it cost me over a thousand dollars to get the front end painted, just the bumper alone. So for example, my nine year coating goes for $2,000, 200 bucks a year, if you will do the math on 10 years, we'll just call it that just for simple math. So I can ax and grind on the coating before we actually get to the clear coat. These 2020 models and newer, anything these days, they're putting thinner and thinner and thinner clear coat on them, okay? I promise you. This is a 10-year-old truck, okay? I've wet sanded this two times, compounded and polished it a ton, okay? And But they had a lot of clear coat on it, okay? And I could do a reading on an area I've actually coated, um, and it, it'll give it to me. Here, one second, and I'll show you. Okay, so there's one area, there's another area. Here's something. Okay, so there, there's another one. So, a bunch of different coatings, but we got a reading of five, okay? So, we had a reading from three to five. So, if we're going to be doing, I actually put on, you know, over a mil of coating on. So, we're practically talking clear coat, okay? So, keep that in mind. So, the trade off. So, a lot of people are getting bonuses this time of year, getting new cars. Well, the ceramic coating or the titanium coating I use is very durable, especially my four, four or five year, my six year, and my nine year, okay? They're not just hard but they actually my six year actually adds over um a mil um well whatever you want to call it we'll actually just say 1.5 mils ish um of um protection which is actually stronger and more durable than the clear coat on your paint so we're actually putting a hard shell over your paint so if you want me to come and help out yes that would be great and this is not a sales push i'm just trying to bring some education so you can either protect it now or we can play a game and see how much protection or how much you know, we can reduce the imperfections on your paint, but it's not going to be what, what I could do if you brought it to me brand new. This is why I stress to all my clients, look, you want to get your vehicle to me new. If you don't get it to me new, it's going to come with a price later on. You know, you can pay now or pay more later, you know, which, not just me, but like anything else or whatever you want to do. But it's really coming down to you. If you don't have it coded, I'm going to have to look at you and say, sorry, not much I can do. Maybe I can do something, but pretty much long story short, if you have something going on and you've done all this car washes and you got micro marring and all this stuff, you're going to have to go get it painted. So I hope this sheds some light on the clear coat these days versus what it was 10, 15 years ago. And then when you go to automatic car washes and what I actually have to do to get those results and what the reality is, is I'm really not going to be able to get them all the way perfect. And I have to respect that clear coat. I will not burn the clear coat just because that's my name, me. And, um, I, I just respect the clear coat in the client's car. I'm not never going to do that if I can help it now, if I mess up, well, obviously I'll pay for it. And that's why I have insurance. But anyways, I hope y'all have a great Saturday. I hope this helps out with the clear coat, understanding why I'm such a big advocate, not just of the titanium ceramic coatings I do, but if you can avoid going to the car washes, great. Yeah, when you touch your paint, you're micro marring it. But when we do it at the car washes and stuff like that, it's at a extremely fast rate. And majority of the time, I'm not going to be able to get all the defects out. I mean, we can do it, but then that also comes with the cost because if I keep compounding or if I have to wet sand, which I really don't like to do, I like to leave as much clear coat on as we can there. And it really look awesome at the same time. So anyways, hope this helps out. Just trying to shed some light on the clear coat and the new vehicles these days, car washes and getting ceramic coatings and the cost and why it actually has a lot of value to it these days. So y'all take it easy. Have a great Saturday. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.